we have an output filter, success phobia, that keeps us from using our competence because we don't feel comfortable. We're not a member of that group. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So I wanna share a really cool concept that I learned recently that can hopefully get you guys to improve your verbal fluency, your pronunciation, so that you sound more like a native speaker, whether you're learning Mandarin Chinese or any other language. This concept comes from a recent interview that I watched with Steven Krashen. This name might sound familiar because I have mentioned him in the channel before because he is the one that developed and researched this idea that input is very very important for language acquisition the thing that piqued my interest was there was one part of the interview where he spoke about how to sound more like a native speaker he gives the example of this experience he had with a french student when he was in secondary school he took french and he hated it he and his friends all despised French culture, French language. They hated the teachers. The final exam was oral. Can you imagine that for a teenager, self-conscious? And he decided to humiliate the instructors, make fun of them and show them up for the fools that they were. And he came in to do his conversation in French and totally exaggerated everything French. He had a beret, you know, that kind of stuff. And he says, ah, mais oui, monsieur, je suis très content d'être ici avec vous. Comment ça va aujourd'hui? And the instructor said, you finally got it. It's amazing. Where have you been? A plus, okay. And to Stephen Krashen, this was a very powerful suggestion that all of us have the ability to speak better to speak more like a native speaker or to speak even like a native speaker and it comes down to playing a certain role to almost acting in a certain way in normal circumstances in daily life this student this french student probably wouldn't have been able to play out this performance to speak so proficiently you know act so well in french but during this examination because he wanted to really exaggerate the accent and this kind of gets metaphysical in a way because, you know, if you really think about it, a lot of what we do in real life is also playing a role. You know, we play a role in society. We speak with a certain accent, you know, a lot of times when we move to a different country, our accent changes to match the accent of the country. For example, you know, if I move to Australia or if I move to the UK, my accent will probably shift a little bit. Stephen Krashen also brings up another very classical story. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I did some research in Canada in the 80s and I went back up there at the University of Ottawa and I met with the French team and we met in a deserted classroom and there were about five people there all five French speakers, all of whom I was very good friends with when I was there before. I led the meeting at the chalkboard and I led it in French, no problem. They were my friends, I was comfortable with them. And I thought I was, I was probably doing okay, I wasn't even thinking about it. The door opened and a stranger walked in. I thought, oh gosh, I'm probably making every mistake in the world. My French collapsed on the spot. My accent got worse. I started making mistakes, etc. Stephen Krashen puts it as we have a output filter. We have an output filter. We have a social phobia. We, we don't feel comfortable in a group when we don't have club membership. We don't feel comfortable. We don't feel competent to speak as well as we can. This is very similar to the idea of playing a role. It's essentially in and out groups. It's whether you belong into a club, whether you have membership into a club. And his point is that native speakers belong to a club of native speakers. They have membership into this native speaker club. And a lot of times learners of a language, people who are not native speakers are trying to get into that club. And when you're not in that club, it's very easy to feel self-conscious, to feel like, you know you're not speaking well enough even though your ability may be very very high if not as high as a native speaker but because you don't have that club membership a lot of times you may get self-conscious you know a lot of times when i speak english like for example filming this video i'm making a lot of mistakes i'm making a lot of grammar mistakes i'm stuttering you know i'm having to film this over and over again this name this name might sound familiar because because i have mentioned him i i, I Let's try that again.
But never once am I thinking, you know, my English sucks. I need to improve my English. You know, I need to go to a cram school because in my mind, I'm already native. You know, I grew up speaking the language. So I never questioned that. And so I think when we're learning a language, it's not really so much how many mistakes we're making because we're going to make mistakes whatever we do, you know, in whatever language, even in our native tongue, we're going to be making lots of mistakes. I think what's important is thinking about how we can get into that club. And really it is a Jedi mind trick of sorts because you really have to believe that once you get to a certain level, you're part of that club and eventually that will sink in and you'll start to speak more naturally, more fluidly, with more confidence. He gives the example of clothing. Clothing has two functions. One is to protect yourself against the weather. The other is to mark you as a member of a group. Being slightly underdressed, slightly overdressed, can be embarrassing. You go to a party and you're the only one there with a tie, so you go take it off, get it a little more informal, etc. Or you're underdressed, not much you can do about it, okay? And it's slightly embarrassing. Mostly people dress exactly what their roles are. As a professor, I try to dress like a professor. I wore the black shirt because I don't have to worry about it. No tie if I have a black shirt and a jacket. Shoes, very subtle point. Soft uh, walking shoes. If I had soft walking shoes with a little red stripe on the back, it wouldn't fit. I would be underdressed. So we know these rules very well, and we're very good at conforming to the rules. Same thing with language. Language helps us communicate. It's also a marker of group membership. When we learn languages, we play a very big role as the student and we give other people the role as teachers. And this is a very, very important concept because roles are good. It helps us, like I said in a previous video, making it seem like you're a student can often give you a lot of benefits because people want to teach you. But being in a role of a student also has its cons. Everything has pros and cons. The potential con of a student role is that you may believe it so much that it may hinder your success or your progress. And I've noticed this with some of my language exchanges or some of my teachers where sometimes if I learn something new outside of class or outside of my language exchange and I'll be sort of hesitant to use it because I'm afraid of showing off, I'm afraid of stepping out of that role as a student, you know, I should be learning from them, I should speak slowly, I should stutter a bit, I shouldn't speak as perfectly as possible because, you know, I'm just a student, I'm supposed to be making mistakes. And these are the instances where I'm thinking in my mind, you know, it's, it's I'm putting myself into a framework, I'm putting myself into a bubble, putting myself into this student label that is in some ways hindering my progress. So what does this all mean, you know, how are we we supposed to use this information to help us improve our accents or improve our speaking, improve our pronunciation so we sound more like native speakers. I think what I take from this is that ultimately what it really comes down to is feeling comfortable. Feeling comfortable in an environment, in a learning environment, in people that you speak with, that you can continue to grow, that you can continue to break molds, you can continue to abandon or to leave behind past mis mistakes and to gain new skills. And so, for example, when I speak with Tom, who's a really good friend of mine and also another language learner, I find that I'm able to try new words with him or to try new idioms because I feel very comfortable with him. I'm not afraid that, you know, he's going to be judging me. And we're both very supportive of each other. When we're choosing language changes and when we're choosing teachers, I think it's important to keep this in mind. But I also think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, at some point you have to break past that mold of a student. Student. And so sometimes that means finding a new teacher, finding a new language exchange, and somehow believing that we are students, we are lifelong students, we are continually learning, but at the same time, we're also players in the game. We're also able to interact with native speakers with confidence. And of course, this is going to take a long time because when you first start out learning a language, you're not going to have a lot of confidence, and this is going to build slowly as you learn more and more. You wouldn't wear the same clothes as you did in secondary school or in daycare or in high school, right? So why would you? use the same tactics or play the same roles as you did when you were a beginner learning a language. Your roles continually change as you continue to improve and it's important to own up to it, to embody it, and to be proud of the new role. So I challenge you to continue to role play, continue to challenge yourself, to continue to find new roles, find new environments that 
are conducive to learning that are not judgmental and i think this is a great way to continue to improve and to sound more like a native speaker if you like this video check out this playlist i made of a bunch of other language learning tips chinese learning tips see you guys next time